What's going on guys, this is Gene Jensen, and in this video, I'm gonna show you all the details that you need to know about a drop shot. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is how to rig the drop shot rig. And I'm gonna talk about two different ways, which are the two ways that I fish it the most. And really it covers just about any way that you can fish a drop shot rig. One is your classic open hook style, and the other one is a weedless style. And those are the two we're gonna cover. First of all, the open hook style. And I'm talking about these style of hooks right here. I got two different sizes. These are the Gamagatsu G Finesse drop shot hooks that I use. And uh, I've, I can't remember the size. I think it's number one and one aught are the two sizes that I use. And the sinker. There's three different general style of sinkers. There's the ball sinker, the cylinder sinker, and the bell sinker or, or teardrop as they call it. I only use the teardrop. And I use three eighths or quarter ounce and that's it. I keep it pretty simple. Um, but the cylinder works great. The ball, it just gets snagged up so much that I had years ago, I completely and totally stopped using it. But the teardrop is the way to go. These are some Strike King, I believe, Strike King tungsten teardrop weights. And those are your, that's your standard hardware. Let's talk about rods. With the open style hook, the rod that I'm looking for is this one right here. This is a six foot 10 medium light. It is an Omen Black. It has uh, a, a 2.0 size reel on it, 20 pound test braid, and a eight pound test fluorocarbon leader. Now the leader material that I've just started using is this gold label Seaguar uh, eight pound test. It comes in six, I have it in two just for fun. Um, it's, it is the premier fluorocarbon on the market. You're gonna pay for it, it's, it's not cheap. Uh, but the most important thing is, is make sure you're using fluorocarbon for this technique. Any type of fluorocarbon will do. That's just what I use. You know, another thing I love about a drop shot is the hardware takes up very little space in your tackle box. That's all I have, just the weights and the sinkers. And I love that. That way it's always there. I don't have to get rid of it because it takes up too much space for that trip or anything else. Love it. All right, let's talk about how to rig it. All right, so first thing you do you just run your line through the eye of your hook. You're gonna tie a Palomar knot with a long leader is what you're, or a long tag, tag end is what you're gonna do. Pass it through, pass it back through. Back in the day, there was a guy that said, well, how, you know, it, all the videos that show you how to tie a Palomar knot show you folding the line and sticking the, the folded part through the eye of the hook and stuff like that. And, you know, how do you do that in really small hooks? Well, that's how you do it. You literally, all you do is just pass it through twice. So you have your loop with about a 14 inch leader or tag end. Okay, real quick Palomar knot. Overhand with the loop. And then you reach through your loop. And I'll set a, I'll put a link to a video up here on how to, how to do it um, in a little bit more detailed. But then you pull everything tight. And I like to pinch the eye of the hook to prevent the, the um, knot from wrapping around that eye. And I just kind of pull it tight, just like that. Now, when you do this, your hook doesn't always stand up or stand out like it's supposed to. You want it to stand out 90 degrees from the line. The trick to make that happen is you take your tag end and with the tip of the hook up, you pass that tag end back, back down through that, the eye of the hook. Now my eyes are a lot older than they were last time I did this video, but we got it, look at that. So when it hits the bottom, that hook is always standing about 90 degrees out with the, with, the, uh, with the worm on it. Then we take the sinker. Now the sinker has a, uh, I call it a split shot swivel. I don't know what they're called, uh, but anyway, you take and you pass your line through the eye of that thing, double your line up, and you pull it snug and you just, you don't have to tie it. It's just like this. And, and the reason it's like, we have it like this is that if you ever do get this stuck on the bottom or snagged on the bottom and you can't get it loose, then you can just break it off. And the sinker is the only thing that comes off and you still have your hook and your bait and everything else. It's just a lot less issues. And then you just grab another sinker and slide it on there and go back to fishing. So, but that's how to rig a, a drop shot rig. That is a little bit of a long leader than what I normally do, but I like to tie a long leader because then I can just take and slide that sucker up just like that and have a shorter leader if I feel like I need to get it, get the bait a little bit closer to the bottom, which I will here because of the water clarity. So we're going to run it about like that. 
All right, so how to rig the, the standard drop shot is, is pretty simple. And, you know, we use a lot of different baits. We use really, really small, finesse style baits. If I don't feel like the bass, if I'm fishing a lake that has big bass or a lake that has, um, that I feel like the conditions uh, warrant the bass to be pretty active, I'm going to go larger. I'm going to go like a straight tail trick worm. But the most important thing to me is I don't want a lot of action out of that worm, out of that bait. So I'm not going to use a creature bait or a craw bait. I have used a lizard before and it's worked fine. And I've used an old monster, but the only problem with those ribbon tail worms is they get tied in knots a lot for this during this technique. So I like a straight tail worm. This is a trick worm. And this right here, this one is the, the half shell, uh, the drop shot half shell from Strike King. So, and I love to fish it, but let me show you the different ways to fish it. If I'm fishing this one right here, it usually means I'm going to nose hook it. And most people would just nose hook it like this. They'll just put it right through just like that. And I, that's fine and dandy. And, it, and if you're fishing wide open and there's no chance at all for you ever to get snagged, that'd be the way I fish it. But the, one of, the way that I like to fish it now is I take and I put that hook in the worm like this. And then I kind of pull up till the tip of that hook almost comes out the head and I fish it just like that. And that way, and I did it crooked because I'm not eyeball, not looking at it at the right angle. But anyway, just like that. And that's how it sits on the worm. And when it's down on the bottom, it sits just like this. Now, other baits that I like to use, and for specific reasons, is I got the trick worm. I got the BFF. There's one box that I'm missing. And I, it's right behind me. Right here is the old and tried and true robo worm. Okay, let's get one out in Aaron's Magic. Boy, these things stink. And I love to use the robo worm. And one of my favorite ways to use it on these open style hooks is to wacky rig it. And it's really, really simple. You go through the bottom of the worm, oh, just behind that little egg sack, and it's just like this. And you get a ton of action out of it. This Aaron Magic's color is really good in clear water. I will not be fishing it today because this water's not clear. But any bait I throw down there is gonna try, I'm gonna try to get it right in front of the fish, the, the uh, nose of the bass so they can see it. But to wacky rig it is one of the best ways to just rack up numbers when you're on a good school of fish and it's real simple. So don't, don't just fish it nose hook classic style. Try a wacky rig and see how many more fish you catch. It's so awesome. All right, so. The, the classic open hook style of drop shotting. Basically, I'm making short pitches uh, to offshore structure and cover um, deeper stuff. Right now we're fishing 10, 10 feet deep on the edge of a creek channel drop. Um, you can also, I also would look at humps and points and anything off, uh, offshore that the, the bass are gonna be hanging on. But we're, in about, we're fishing about 10 to 12 feet deep right now. And the, the reason we're, gonna, we're using, and it's, and it's critical to use a fluorocarbon leader is you've got to have that bait falling down to the bottom. Okay, so it's off the bottom when you pull it tight, but when you let it go slack, it will slowly sink down to the bottom. And you want to be able to fish it on that slack line. If you use braid, it will float. If you use monofilament, it'll float. And it will prevent that, that bait from getting down to the bottom where you want to fish it. Um, the weight is there just to keep it in one spot. So I'm, gonna, I'm letting it get down to the bottom. I'm dropping it to a semi-slack line, meaning my line is halfway bowed, and I'm just shaking it is all I'm doing. And I'm shaking it on, on a slack line, and then I'm going to pull it up to see if a, bit, a fish is on it, because a lot of times when you're fishing on that slack line, you don't feel the bite, but you pull it up and you start to feel tension, and then you set the hook on them. All right, so one of the questions I'm going to get asked is how long of a leader do I use? And let me kind of explain this. I'm in 11 and a half feet of water right now. My leader starts right that right there. So about a 15 foot leader is what I've got on. And the reason for that long is one, if I need to retie or anything else, I don't have to retie a leader. I can just use that leader up. It's still got plenty of room to use it up. Another thing is, is that the more leader I got, the, the more I feel, the more invisible I feel that fluorocarbon is in that super clear water. And the FG knot lasts so long, which is the knot that I use to connect with, the FG knot. Um, it lasts so long that I don't have to retie so much so I can get away with keeping a long leader on there and not feel like I'm wasting fluorocarbon. So that's why I use a, a real long leader. All right, so when you set the hook, you just got to make sure you just lift up on it is all you got to do is just lift. Don't set the hook hard like you do with a text. Oh, this is a big fish. No, it's not. Just thought it was big. But you don't jerk it like a Texas rig. You've got that open hook. 
So you just got to make sure you tighten up on them. And you should have them hooked right in the roof of the mouth most of the time, unless you let them take it too long and then they'll have it a little deeper. But eight pound test, I'm not too much worried about losing this fish. I am going to loosen the drag up just a little. Oh, I just tightened it. Loosen it up just a bit, a bit so you guys can hear the drag scream, I guess. It's not a bad little fish. So lift him up in here. Oh, yeah, he is a good one. Oop, he come right off. Come here, big guy. Look at that son of a gun. All right, let's get back in there and see if I can catch another one. Now, what I did different with that one is I, I didn't nose hook it. I wacky rigged it and got a bite almost immediately on the drop. And, and he shook my weight off, so let's get another weight and put it on. All right, so let's talk about how to rig the weedless drop shot rig. Now, because of the way I'm gonna, I'm gonna hook the worm, I need a little bit heavier rod. So I'm gonna go with a medium power rod, uh, spinning rod, same thing, a 2.0 reel, size reel. And I like a longer one because I've been doing a lot of casting, dragging like a Carolina rig, working it through cover and stuff like that. So I got a seven foot three medium spinning rod. This is a, a Fate Black. The new Fate Black's out by 13, but uh, the hook is, is pretty important. Now, you could use a standard offset worm hook in about a one odd or something like that, but these 10 uh, hooks by Gamagatsu, they got the 10 keeper, are, in my opinion, the best. You get the best hookups. They're a light wire hook. It's easier to get a good hook in them, in the fish, and that kind of stuff. You just don't want to use it with too fat of a, a worm. If you're going to go with a fatter worm than, say, a trick worm, then you're going to want to use a, an extra wide gap or a, just a one offset round bend. But anyway, this is a really good, really good hook. I'll leave the links to all of the stuff down in the description so you guys can go look them up on Tackle Warehouse. Um, but we're going to tie it the same way. We're going to run it through the eye of the hook, pass it back through, and I just had a bug try to land in my eye, back through the eye of that hook. So I have a loop. Okay. And I'm gonna tie an overhand knot. So this is just a Palomar knot, that's all it is. Pull everything snug. It's probably a good idea to wet it before you tighten it down, that way you don't weaken the knot any. And then, you take the tag end, pass it down through, and pull that knot through the eye if you can. If you can't, it's no big deal. And then put your sinker on, you're ready to go. All right, so we're gonna show you how to put this hook, the uh, the weedless hook into the, into the worm. And it's pretty simple, it's a lot like a Texas rig, but it's a straight shank. So I'm gonna put it in the tip of the worm at an angle. I'm gonna slide that in here, try to stay center line of the, of the worm, which I did a horrible job at, there we go. Center line of that worm, pull that hook through, pull the keeper through, and then rotate it so it looks just like this, okay? Then I'm going to take and I'm going to lay that hook alongside the worm so I can see where it's going to go into. See, it? let me get that line out of the way. So I'm going to lay it alongside. You can see where that hook is supposed to go into that worm and I'm going to eyeball it. And I'm literally just going to go zip just like this and try to make it to where that, the tip of that hook just barely sticks out of that worm. And that's it. And look at, the only thing that concerns me is this is the 13 Fishing BFF and it does, it works great with this hook. I might use a bigger hook if I find that I'm missing hook sets because there's not a whole lot of gap for that worm to get out of the way and that hook to bite. But I think we'll be okay with that. That'll be, that's pretty close though. That's about my limit of thickness for this one aught hook. So I might go bigger hook or I might go a different, different style hook, but that's how you rig it. And it is weedless. You can drop it down into the thick stuff and stuff like that. So let me, let's get out on the water fish this and, and show you what it looks like. All right, so the weedless drop shot. This is my favorite way to fish a drop shot, by far my favorite way. It just doesn't get snagged. You can fish it like a Carolina rig. You can drag it slow like a Texas rig. You can do a whole, you can cast it long distances and drag it through areas and it'll come through cover most of the time. So what I've got in front of me is I've got some brush piles way out in front of me and I'm gonna make a nice half cast let it sink down to the bottom and I can work it through the brush pile. But I'm gonna do it the same way I do the standard style is as I'm working it, I'm gonna shake it on a slack line. 
and I'm gonna drag it and I'm gonna shake it on the slack line. Ooh, I thought I just got bit, but I think it just hit the bottom. That's what, and then, and just working it like I would just about any other type of rig, but the only difference is from a Carolina rig and a Texas rig is I can keep it in the strike zone longer so I can shake it in the same spot and drop it and shake it and drop it. Now, if you do get it hung in a brush pile, and it same goes with the standard style, you've got that weight below the hook you get right over top of your snag, and hopefully you haven't set the hook in whatever you got it snagged in, but you get right over top of your snag, and you shake it, and that hook being below, or that weight being below the hook will pull that, a lot of times will pull that hook out of whatever it's snagged in, and you can get it out. You have a lot better chance of getting it out, that is. All right, let me work this thing back to the boat so we can catch a fish. All right, notice the difference in the hook set is you gotta hammer this one home. Ah, it came off, it! You gotta hammer it home. And I didn't set it hard enough, really, because that hook's gotta come through that worm and into the fish's mouth. Can't believe he popped off. Now, as for weights or size of weights, I have two different sizes, quarter ounce and three eighths. I use the three eighths when I'm fishing 12 to 15, 20 feet, really deep, and I wanna get it down there fast. But really, most of the time, I'm throwing a quarter ounce. And the reason I do that is it forces me to keep fish it slow it, i want to keep the weight on the bottom so it forces me to be a little bit more careful about how hard i work this bait with the weight because any i don't want to move that weight off the bottom i don't want to kick up any silt on the bottom or anything else and using a lighter weight forces me to do that mm, there we go <laughs> this one is a giant i mean at least in his head He's huge. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man, poor little guy. Stop flopping and I'll throw you back in the water. Uh, there we go. <laughs> With a drop shot, you really, the, the biggest thing to remember is that it is meant to be left in the same spot for longer than you normally would to be able to fish the same strike zone, the same area, but uh, you know, longer. It works great in brush piles, works great on flats. It works really good. You can cast and drag it back to you. You can flip it directly to a, a cover or something, you know, something specific. You can cover a lot of water with it, but slowly. It's not one of those, not a search bait, but once you find the fish, you can really, really fill the boat. But that's a drop shot. I hope you guys learned something. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, hit the little bell. And uh, like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water. Go ahead and catch some fish and have a great day. We'll see you.